Hello Bakers, I am excited to show you how to make phyllo dough from scratch. Can you believe I have not done this yet? It is a really simple dough to make. Let me show you. Few basic ingredients that you would normally need for a dough or a pastry. Here I have some bread flour. Now for this recipe, I do recommend bread flour. We're going to do a lot of rolling of this phyllo dough. We want this dough to be strong. We don't want it to rip when we're rolling. So we're going to use a bread flour, not all purpose flour. Now into our bread flour, we're going to add in some olive oil. Olive oil for lovely flavor, but also for fat. Now, go in with your fingers and just rub that oil into the flour until it resembles kind of like just a lumpy coarse mix. You might be wondering like, what's the point of this? And do you just add it in with the liquid? The point of rubbing it in to the flour like this, just like the way you would if you were making like a crumble topping or a cobbler, the fat gets coated by the flour. You get all these little lumps of fat all the way throughout your dough. And this is one of the things that will give you a lovely flaky dough. So when you see those layers, when you bake this off, that's what the fat does. Just like that, in with our hands. So now let's talk about our liquid. Here I have some warm water. You want it to be warm so it absorbs all that flour. Into this, I'm going to add in some vinegar. Now you can use any type of vinegar you want, like a white vinegar. You can even use apple cider, which is what I'm using there. The purpose of vinegar is to actually make your dough more pliable. So we have the strength in the dough from the bread flour. The vinegar is actually going to make it really easy for us to roll out, which you're going to see me do in a little bit. And that just really helps a lot. And then into our liquid, we're going to add in some salt. Now you're probably wondering, why didn't I add the salt into the dry ingredients? I will tell you, the longer I've been a pastry chef which is now 20 something years I've started to add my salt into my liquid so it dissolves and it gets everywhere so our um, our mix won't be salty but it will have lots of flavored salty water all the way throughout bring it together you can do this with your hands or a spatula so you'll see your dough pretty quickly come into a ball just like that so just mix your dough until it forms a ball just like this and our bowl is clean. If you need a little bit more liquid, add that in just to hydrate all your flour. I might just put a tiny bit of flour on my work surface. I'm going to knead this dough by hand for around, you know, eight to 10 minutes or so. What we're going for is a nice smooth dough. This helps to develop the gluten and will make it a nice dough to roll out. As you're kneading, tiny bit of flour on your surface. You do not need a lot. We're not trying to alter the flour in the recipe here. And just so you know, if you need to be hands-free and doing other stuff in the kitchen, like I'm often doing uh, 10 things at once, pop this into your stand mixer. You can totally do this on your stand mixer either, whatever is easiest for you. I wanted to show you this method just because it's so simple. So for those of you who don't know, I have a series called Bold Baking Basics here on YouTube and I started it around eight years ago, pretty much for those ingredients that, you know, I can buy in my supermarket here in Los Angeles, but maybe you're in Austria and you have trouble getting vanilla extract or brown sugar or molasses, which we've heard about all these things. So this is part of my Bold Baking Basics series, how to make your own phyllo dough. And I just think it's a great addition because I for years have been buying this dough thinking that you can't make it by hand. And trust me, it is so easy and the results are amazing. Okay, lovely, look at that. After the few minutes, you'll have a lovely smooth dough, nice and tight, not too wet, not too dry. Here's what I'm gonna do. This is one of my chef secrets actually. Have you ever heard of bread bags? Well, in my supermarket, and quite common, I buy these things called bread bags. They're not Ziploc bags. They're cheaper and they're bigger. And they're for storing bread or for like bigger things in your kitchen. I have these bread bags for pastry, for bread doughs, uh, for something like this. They work really, really well. Wrap it up in a nice bag and we're going to let this sit at room temperature for around two hours, let it relax. Then we're gonna come back and roll it and shape it. So our dough is rested and ready to go. The first thing I want to do before we start rolling it out is mix together our flour mixture. This is different. And uh, we're gonna use this to go between all the layers. So here I have some corn flour and here I have a little bit of all purpose flour. And then just mix these two ingredients together. We are not using just traditional regular flour to roll it out because what can happen is this is a delicate dough 
and if we don't have the cornstarch in here the dough will stick together the cornstarch dries it out keeps it dry so you can store it in the fridge for an extended period of time you can even put it in the freezer and because of this mixture they won't stick together okie dokie lovely let's check on our dough i'm going to put a little bit of my flour mixture on my countertop and here's what we're going to do take this dough and divide it in half divide that in quarters and then we're going to divide each quarter into five so roughly what you're looking for if you have a weighing scales is around 28 grams each which is one ounce that's roughly what we're going for you can do this in the palm of your hand or you can do it on the countertop just roll each piece into a little ball this will help us have lovely round sheets of pastry just so you know, we don't really want any flour mixture for when we're rolling it into balls. Makes it easier if there isn't any. So for a period of my career, I actually was a bread baker. That's why I came to the United States when I moved to Tahoe. I was an apprentice bread baker. Um, so as you can see me rolling these balls and thinking like, how does she get them so smooth? This is from years and years of practice. Take a little piece of dough, just kind of fold the riggedy bits, riggedy bits, the, the, these, these bits, <laughs> fold them around, you have a bit of a smooth top, press it into the palm of your hand, press, 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 and then you get a lovely smooth ball and then just a tiny seam, if any, underneath. That's what we're going for. Okay, lovely. I'm going to pop these over here under my nice clean tea towel. We're going to let them relax for a few minutes because we just rolled them up into the balls. The gluten needs to relax so it'll be easier for us to roll out. Put a tea towel over them or cling wrap just to make sure they don't get a skin and that will make sure that we have lovely pastry. So I'm going to give those a few minutes, 10 minutes, we're going to come back and roll them. So it's been a few minutes, our dough has relaxed. I am going to dust my countertop generously with our flour mixture and here I have one ball. Give that a little bit of a dusty dust in the cornstarch mix also. Don't be afraid with this here. We do need to use it liberally because it stops it from sticking together. Now, we're working with one ball at a time here. We are going to roll this out to around five inches. If it's bringing back too much on you, then let it relax for a few more minutes. That's very common. Do a good job as getting it as round as possible. And we just want to get it to five inches round. How are we doing? Oh, lovely, five inches. Okay, you are gonna go back underneath our towel, take another one, same again, dust your counter, dust your ball, roll it out to five inches. Now we are going to repeat this process with five balls of dough. Now let's go back here, layer five of them on top, a bit of our flour mixture in the middle, on top again, one, two, three, a little bit of flour, four, a little bit of flour, keeping the rest of our dough covered. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to roll this whole stack at the same time out to eight inches. Now, as you do this, just be careful that you try and get it as even as possible. Put on the same amount of pressure as you do in the middle um, as you're doing to the outside. You want to get like these kind of thin, even translucent sheets. If you feel like you need more flour at any point, just add it. Lovely, so they are rolled out now to eight inches. Now listen, some of them might be a little bit bigger than others. We're rolling by hand, that can happen. There we go, lovely. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to separate each sheet of pastry. Beautiful, look at that. And we're not done yet. This looks fantastic. All we're trying to do is make sure that they're not sticking together, that they're looking good. I definitely could work on those edges a little bit, get them a little bit thinner. Here's what we're gonna do, do another round of our flour mixture and we're stacking up again. As they'd say in Ireland, don't be scabby with the flour. As a pastry chef, I've never been known to roll something perfectly, but I have to say these are looking pretty good. Flour in between, lovely. Now I'm gonna flour my surface a little bit more, flour my rolling pin. And now I'm going to roll this out as evenly as I can to 12 inches. And then again, dust as you go if you need it. So these are looking gorgeous. Anywhere 10 to 12 inches is fine. Now let's see how good I did. You ready? How am I doing? How's that look? Translucent. Translucent. Beautiful. Wafer 
thin pastries or some recipes I say are definitely a labor of love. This is not one of them. This is fun to make. It's easy. All you have to do is just roll to certain sizes. We do these at a stack of five at a time because it's more manageable. You will need to repeat the process with your other dough balls. So this pastry is ready to be used right now, but often you don't want to use it straight away. So here's what we're going to do. How to store it is really simple. We're going to make sure that there's flour in between each sheet. We're stacking them back up again so they're not sticking in the fridge as they sit and rest overnight or up to two days even. And here's what I like to do, a piece of parchment and just roll your pastry around it. You know the way you see it when you get it out of the freezer section? It's kind of like this. And then here's my bread baggie into my bread bag. We want to keep the air off it, you guys, because if this dries out, it's useless. Believe me, um, I've carelessly wrapped this dough before and once it dries out, the air gets at it, you can't use it for anything. So now you can pop this in the fridge for up to two days and you can use it whenever you want, or you can pop it into the freezer for up to four weeks and it freezes beautifully. I defrost this and use it all the time. So now you have your own homemade phyllo pastry. You can make whatever you want, sweet or savory. To show you how to use it, I'm gonna make some spanakopita, which are just a really lovely little uh, spinach parcel. So to use your pastry, all you have to do is put one sheet down, brush it with some butter, another sheet, brush it generously with butter. I'm just gonna do three sheets right now because I think that's the right amount of thickness. Brush it all over with butter. That butter will help make our pastry extra flaky. I'm gonna put in the middle of my spinach feta filling, just so you know this recipe is on my website. And then I'm gonna fold over the sides of the pastry and then roll it up to create a lovely little parcel. Beautiful, pop it onto a tray and then with this phyllo, rather than using egg wash, you also brush it with more melted butter, which is just even more delicious. Baker spanakopita or whatever you decide to make with your homemade phyllo pastry. Then just sit back and enjoy the rewards. So when your pastry comes out of the oven, you will see it's a beautiful golden brown. Look at those lovely layers. All those crumbles, that just makes me so happy. Look at this beautiful, crunchy, crisp pastry. I think the biggest compliment is that this is just like store-bought, if not better. Who knew we could get this at home just by rolling it by hand? I can't believe throughout my whole career, this is the first time I've ever made phyllo dough. I have to say I'm blown away with how easy it was to make this pastry and so rewarding. It is such a beautiful dough to work with and the whole technique from start to finish was just really fun to do. And then you get these amazing results at the end. Check out my website for more recipes to be able to use this fantastic dough. And I guarantee you, your friends, your family, everybody will be absolutely amazed. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you back here again next week with a brand new recipe. Mm. So crunchy.